Hello YouTube, this is Sam from Tiger is Calling. In this session of the video, we're actually going to talk about the gallbladder. All right, so the gallbladder is actually your pouch. What? Really? Is that a pouch? Yeah, it's exactly a pouch we have, which has its fundus, its body, its neck, and its ducts, and finally they gotta drain into the second part of the duodenum. All right, so what is your gallbladder? Gallbladder is nothing, just a pear-shaped sac that lies within your inferior aspect of your right quadrant lobe of your liver so in the inferior surface of your liver this is your liver for example like that one on the inferior surface you kind of find the hanging structure inferior and posterior you kind of find a hanging structure that is your gallbladder but you can see your if you if you see it on the anterior side you can also see the hanging part of it from the anterior side that is the fundus part of the gallbladder that is this lower body lower part so your gallbladder, the pouch is actually divided into three parts. That's your fundus and your body and the neck. I'm sorry. That one is your neck. So I have to clearly highlight it. All right. So one thing more you have to remember that your gallbladder is actually located in the right hypochondrial region. We have talked about the hypochondrial and all that region. You can check our uh, video on that in the uh, we have as we have divided the nine abdominal regions. All right. Uh, let's move further and uh, we know that the gallbladder is actually surrounded by the peritoneum So we know how is that possible because our liver is surrounded by the peritoneum So if the liver is surrounded by the peritoneum, it's obvious So gallbladder is beneath it uh, and rear to it on the crowded lobe side So this guy is going to give the peritoneum to the gallbladder and the gallbladder is also over intraperitoneal organ uh, after that, we'll be talking about the functions, its boundaries, and its parts. And finally, we're going to talk about nervous supply of it, venous drainage, lymphatic, and all that. So we'll get a start with the function. So if you're talking about the function of the gallbladder, if I write it down like this one, if you're talking about the function of the gallbladder, remember this one, that the gallbladder actually, the main function is it's concentrate, uh, I mean, concentrated, concentrate concentrate your bile how does that concentrate your bile remember that your bile is coming from the hepatocytes the cells of the liver and kind of coming and are being stored in your gallbladder so what does gallbladder does it absorb the water in the bile juice so it kind of make it concentrated remember if we remove a water from the bile it will be more concentrated so that's why we can we say that the gallbladder also function is by concentrating the bile the next function is it is store the bile obviously this is the main function a store bile concentrate bile and and this guy, and one thing more is that it, it has the capacity to hold about 30 to 50 milliliter of bile. Remember, the your pouch, your gallbladder has the capacity to hold 30 to 50 ml of bile. And one thing more, that this gallbladder is regulated by an enzyme you call, or you can say, uh, sorry, it's a hormone called cholio, uh, cholecystokinin. So the cholecystokinin kind of uh, regulate the gallbladder, which helps it to, you know, kind of, uh, kind of release the bile into the, the second part of the duodenum. Now let's move and talk about the boundaries. So we have three main boundaries of your gallbladder. Gall boundaries. The main boundary, if you're talking about, the first is anterior and superior boundary like anterior and superiorly so anterior and superiorly we have the inferior border of liver, liver remember this is your liver on the on the uh, on the like in the inferior side we have what, what we have we have the gallbladder so that's why we say an anterior and superior like if we go superior to the uh, gallbladder we have we have our liver like we have the inferior border of the liver probably inferior border of liver and over anterior abdominal wall probably anterior abdominal wall is coming uh, anterior to it so that's why we'll do the same anterior abdominal wall the second part or is second part if you go toward it we will talk about the posterior boundary uh, that is formed by the transverse colon remember your transverse colon we have talked about it earlier transverse colon that is kind of crossing it you know, from the uh, posterior side and we have the proximal duodenum so these both structure are on the posterior side of your gallbladder 
And the third boundary is which is inferiorly, we talk about inferior, what is beneath it. So we have the bilateral tree. What is bilateral tree? It's nothing. It's just uh, the ducts, the duct ductus system, which which brings your all bile from your liver till the bile, till bring it till the bile duct or till the end of your uh, second part of the duodenum. All right, so it's kind of all ducts, all ducts forming together a line mesh up. So that's why it's called bilateral duct. So bilateral duct is on the inferior side and the other remaining parts of the genome are also on the inferior side. Now let's move further and talk about uh, uh, something else. Uh, one thing more you have to remember that the body is actually the largest part of your gallbladder. So this is this guy is your largest part, right? And neck. One thing you have to remember regarding neck is that the neck contains actually mucosal folds. Your neck contains the mucosal folds that are named as heart man's pouch. So this is actually uh, this this neck side or this point is actually uh, you know a common location for gallstones. So if if somebody is asking or a teacher is asking which is the common location for your gallstone, remember your neck. This boy, this boy is your common location for your gallstone. This is this is the common side, so that's why they kind of lodged in here. Your gallstone kind of lodged in here, and you know causing the coleostasis we'll be talking about the coleostasis later on and that's it regard now we'll move on uh, that's it regarding the introduction now we'll move towards the vasculature what does that mean by the vasculature i mean um the i uh, will talking about the arterial supply we'll be talking about the venous supply we'll be talking about the nerve supply and in the end we'll be talking about the biliary tree that would that would be this one another lecture i'll make it uh, so i'll you know divide this uh, lecture into two parts now let's talk about the vasculature. So that would be first we'll talking about the arterial supply. So arterial supply. If we're going to talk about the arterial supply, remember that your gallbladder is supplied by your cystic artery. All right. Gallbladder is supplied by the cystic artery, which is the branch of your right hepatic artery. And that is the branch of the common hepatic artery and uh, again as you go further on and there are you will reach to the celiac trunk and the venous drainage is very a little bit divided like if we talk about the venous drainage so we have different venous drainage for the over neck and different venous drainage for over fundus plus body right for the neck we remember that the vein uh, the, that the uh, venous drainage is uh, the cystic veins right the, the, uh, the veins actually drain into your cystic veins and they drain into the portal vein. I'm sorry. <clears throat> they drain into the portal vein. And the fundus in the body, they, uh, th their venous drainage is directly into the hepatic sinusoids. We'll be talking about the hepatic sinusoids in the another lecture that will be on the portal vein. So we're not going to talk about the hepatic sinusoids. What are they? Not in detail, not anything about it. We'll talk about that later. And if we now we'll talk about we have talked about nerve supply now we'll talk about the we'll talk about the nerve supply we'll talk about the venous drainage so a nerve supply would be parasympathetic and sympathetic fibers from the celiac plexus right very simple so parasympathetic and sympathetic fiber from parasympathetic and sympathetic fiber from the celiac plexus so that's it regarding the uh, introduction or the gallbladder now in the next lecture we'll be talking about the um the uh, uh, bilary tree that is very easy and very uh, very much easy because you have to follow the following steps that's it keep watching we'll talk about that one second lecture see you there